Welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be about something I quite often get a lot of requests for, so I decided to make a whole sequence that you can follow along with me with my friend Roller named Fred. So Fred and me are very good friends. We usually hang out like basically every day, sometimes just to trigger my body and sometimes to actually release the certain parts that are too stiff or just like dying from a lot of exercising that I do daily. So if you want to help yourself feel better or you want to warm your body, warm up your body before a workout, a roller, maybe some other guy, dude, not named Fred, maybe, I don't know, Steve, <laughs> should be a really good friend of yours. So first, obviously, my roller is like with these little thingies here that are quite painful. I think the best thing for you if you're starting to roll uh, is to buy one without them, something that's maybe a bit softer, not as hard as this. And uh, whatever you are buying, make sure that it's good for you. Yeah. So try it out, even in a store. You don't care. Like try it out, roll <laughs> and see how it feels. And of course, in time, you will be able to buy one of these that's kind of painful and really good for you. So we're going to start from our thoracic spine and every now and then I'm probably just going to stop because my mic is going to be like hitting my back so I will need to like check it a bit so don't think that I'm in pain, just like check it. And I will be lying first on my thoracic spine. So you put your roller on the floor and you put your thoracic upper body on the roller. You intertwine your fingers and you put them behind your head. Make sure you're holding your head with your arms. So the neck should be very, very relaxed. Everything is in your arms, okay? What you're doing first is just slightly pushing your upper body by engaging your legs and making sure that the pressure goes a bit more to the roller. In that way, you will feel the roller entering your upper body part and you're gonna feel like really, I would say nice and at the same time really blousy, but it's like a juicy, good feeling in the end. So you're just slightly rolling backwards and forward just to get the feeling of it, yeah? And then when you got the feeling of it to see if it's painful enough or not painful enough, that sounds weird, you will make sure the pressure of your legs towards the upper body is proper for you. Then you will bend your head backwards, still holding your neck as much as you can. And you will press your neck towards your chest. Oh, I'm popping. <laughs> nice. And then you will roll a bit at the same pressure that you chose. And then again, to the back, front, and roll a bit down. And then we're going to return. And up, and return, and down. And again, up. Exhale while you're rolling. <sighs> yes. If this feels comfy, you can roll a bit without getting down to the floor. <laughs> this sound is so hilarious. And you do that a couple of times, okay? So this was pressure centrally and the same on the up, on the both sides, right? But usually what I prefer doing afterwards is rolling sides and entering my lats and entering my shoulder blades and entering all, all, entering all those parts. They're basically more stiffer than the central part, right? So to, in order to do so, you are rotating a bit to the side you, you will have to find your side, right? And then rolling a bit here. It could also be done in a way that you're like all the way in the air, as I am. But if you're doing this first time, it's going to be a bit too painful. So maybe I would advise for you to be on the floor while you're doing. If you find a certain spot that's stiff and like feels really uncomfortable, try to just stay in that part of your body and breathe there. Like you're actually really breathing into the muscle that stiff pain, okay? So. Maybe, maybe the better word for this would be discomfort, not pain. Because sometimes we think about pain being something like this, but this is actually a discomfort, not pain. This is just your brain signaling that something is going on there that should be, I don't know, in a better way uh, uh, felt or, or it should be healthier or it's maybe too intertwined between your tissue and stuff. So just, just like try to think of it as discomfort and not pain, okay? coming forward <laughs> so you can also release your arm here and the rolling is gonna be more intense right 
and you can of course then try try to shift on your armpit so the armpit part is probably one of the most neglected parts that people like never roll and it's really really important to roll it why it's connected uh, here with your shoulder and as well with your uh, front part of the body and it's assuring your arm to be mobile enough so if you're not rolling this ever sometimes you might feel stiffness here or actually in your shoulder even though this is your armpit so for the armpit I suggest you just stay here and then you try to like go a bit up and a bit down trying to find that spot sweet spot that's in pain oh my god <sighs> and then when you find it just hold it for a second or two here yeah and just try again to breathe into the area then when you're finished with this you can slightly start to roll towards the roller and back usually when I do it I hold my head because in this way I'm not having any pressure in my neck it, the neck is really relaxed you can even hold your head like this and I'm just concentrating on my armpit my latissimus and my flexors flexor <laughs> flexors actually it's more of them so this is what I'm doing if you feel comfortable enough to be only on your stomach here just to massage your front part here this meaty part yeah then you can lie on the floor like this and just breathe here also if you feel comfortable you can roll forward and backward always the rolling is like a bit more um, discomforting it's, it's like painful a bit but if you're just standing in one spot in one spot it's also perfectly fine it's just a matter of how you feel because we're not the same body so you should like do you yeah so upon finishing one side return and go back towards the other side it's the same thing so I rolled a bit here on my uh, shoulder blade then I started to turn and found the armpit part and rolled a bit here or just a couple of breaths here and then I rolled towards my chest into my plexus and upon finding a spot that I feel comfortable in I just stayed here and relaxed or of course rolled a bit forward and backwards so this is the upper body of thoracic spine after finishing that my next thing what I do usually and I don't know I'm always doing thoracic spine before the neck I feel that way but maybe it's gonna be better for you to do your neck first depends it's personal right what I do is I do this so I just lie on the roller I know it looks like I'm not doing anything but actually I can feel my neck releasing the tension so so much so if this is not enough you can of course move your head left and right and shake it yes and no because the intensity of the pressure of the roller in your neck muscle muscles will be much more intense wow so good yeah and of course you can also do movements that are like circular so this is also an option and if this seems not strong enough you can push the floor again with your feet and make the pressure on your neck bigger yeah of course sometimes even holding the roller could be helpful because then you can go a bit to the back and front but this is for me I think something that I rarely do it's much more comfortable to just do it like this lying down and just enjoying this sweet painful discomforting yet so pleasurable <laughs> feeling okay so this is for the neck when you're finished with the upper body, with your plexus, your latissimus dorsi, and uh, with your shoulder blades uh, and thoracic spine, next what I do is leggies. Okay, so you have a lower back pain. So if you have it, one of the best things you can do is to roll out your glutes. So first I usually do it with the roller, then I like keep on going and going and then I use balls so you can actually use the balls for it as well I prefer those that are um, uh, like, like a bit harder because if they're like firm enough then they're gonna enter more and uh, divide your tissue better especially fascia but if even this is kind of painful for your bum <laughs> I would suggest to just stay on the roller because this can be really intense so you go first on your glute maximus and you just roll it slightly here you will notice that I'm always using floor to make pressure bigger or lesser is that a word <laughs> or not so hard enough on my muscle and I'm using my palm and I'm using my leg so you find the place where you can be comfortable in and roll the glute max 
where you're, while you're ruling, ruling, <laughs> rolling there, try to slightly shift towards your glute medius because this is probably the most painful part you can hit because they are quite stiff. So for all you having back problems, I repeat, this is a must do, okay? So you're rolling here. And then of course you can switch the sh shift the sorry the weight towards the center and a bit towards the side. Yeah. And when you're finished with that, what I usually suggest for everybody to do is to release the IT band. So it's this part of your leg from your knee, hip, and it's very stiff for most of the people. I should really address that if you have a knee valgus, meaning that your knee is going when you're walking a bit inside. So this release could uh, help you with that, of course, and building muscles that will prevent it, but this is a help uh, that could be uh, nice for you. So you, you put your leg here, and this leg can be up front or out back, depends how intense this is, because this will be intense. I, I'm always repeating this because I don't want you to think that you're some special weird person that has pain here. Everybody has it but as long longer as you roll that will start to feel more comfortable your nervous system is not used to you doing this and it's going to take some time for him to get used to it okay and to say okay it's good i'm not going to panic i'm not going to like flip i'm fine so it band back to that so you're rolling and of course going as lower and lower and lower until you hit the part towards your knee the rolling can be like longer stripes like this, or it can be smaller, or you can just stand and find that trigger point and just breathe in it. I do this quite often, so I don't feel anything here, but most of my clients just start to like <laughs> make really weird faces. When you finished with the eye bed, roll on your stomach and you start to roll out your quad, okay? Rectus femoris, the central part, is usually the stiffest part. We use it every day when we walk, when we like walk on staircases. We use it a lot, much more than the back part. So this is gonna be maybe stiffer than what we're gonna do next. So try to roll it, make sure to go through, it, through its length all the way towards your hip flexors, but be very gentle here. Maybe you wanna put the leg down, the back leg and just stay here and breathe for a while because hip flexors from all the sitting and well, you know, living in 21st century, uh, quite often can get um, painful even just by standing here, nothing more, yeah. So when you're finished with rolling out this part, you will come back and you will go to your hammies. So you will put the roller here and there are a couple of versions you can do. You can sit on the floor if you feel comfortable enough like this and put your leg here and just I usually press the, the, the leg here a bit because I prefer the pressure to be bigger, but for some of you, this is already gonna be intense enough. If you have knee problems and you're unable to sit like this, then I would suggest that you actually just do it like this. Put your leg here and just do it like this, yeah? That first version is more intense, so I prefer it. And of course, you can make the pressure bigger by putting the other leg on the lower leg. And then there's more weight on the roller pressing the lower leg. This is an option. You will notice you're gonna get start to get sweaty when you're doing this, most of you, because you're actually doing your workout, regardless of the fact that it looks like it's not a workout. And uh, if you feel pain in your wrists, you can always um, try to be on your uh, fists or maybe to be on your elbows. This is also an option, right? Or if it's also uncomfortable, I'm sorry, this is rolling, it has to be done that way. So just try to find any accommodation that you can, making sure that you're not in uh, inappropriate pain or discomfort. When you finish the hammies, you will do the calves. So for any of you that feel stiff here in your ankles and maybe feel pain in your feet every day, walking and standing a lot, uh, releasing your calves and rolling them out will be of uh, much use. Uh, when I start, I usually just try to see how my calf feels today because you know, sometimes they're stiffer, sometimes they're not. So if I immediately go on rolling it like really hard, that's not gonna be a good idea for my muscle because he's gonna signal it to even like get stiffer because he's in pain, panic and then it's not gonna be useful. So try to feel it first out to see how it, how it goes. And then if it's comfortable enough, just go through its whole length, check it out. Then if it's comfortable as well, then make 
pressure with the other leg and then roll the whole whole area forward and backward a couple of times yeah and that is for the calf of course some people like to also roll uh, the, um, this area of your leg because uh, it can be also in charge for getting your doors deflection uh, uh, in a bad way uh, if you want to do that the option would be just to stay here and just like slightly to roll here but it's it's something that I rarely do because I don't have problems with that, but maybe some of you do, so use it. Uh, upon finishing calves and upon finishing hamstrings and my quads and my glutes, what I do next is I release my inner thighs, that is my adductors. To do so, I go on the stomach, I put one leg here, roar in, on the inner side of my thigh, and I just literally lie down. Uh, even doing just this will be <laughs> extremely uncomfortable because your inner thighs are you like they're never rolled they're never touched <laughs> caressed <laughs> i'm trying to be funny no but maybe they are being touched i don't know i'm not getting in that but massaged probably rarely okay so people usually massage legs back back mostly but this area eh, it's being really neglected as well as the part that I was showing uh, in the first couple of uh, takes. So here, be mindful, go slow. And if you wanna make pressure bigger, just push the arms and go a bit more up. And then the pressure, oh my God, is gonna be much bigger, yeah. And then upon finishing. So you will do everything of that on the other side. So just repeating, I'm not gonna do everything with you. So first I start with my legs on my uh, glute. Maximus, then I got on my gluteus medius, then I went on my sides to massage my IT band, remember, daga, 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 with my leg here or here, then I slightly started to rotate to massage and to trigger point my quadratus, not quadratus, sorry, <laughs> my, uh, my quad, quadratus lumborum is actually here, and upon finishing that, daga, 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 a couple of times just to make sure that my both sides are being touched <laughs> I went to roll out my hamstrings so I was here this is what I feel comfortable in oh for you dancers or people who are very flexible I tend to do this as well this is gonna look very weird but it's like really really nice to do it so I'm like in a split and then the intensity that I can roll my hammies with is much bigger uh, I would suggest just putting a sock because as you can see I cannot slide <laughs> So it's easier if you have something, that's why I'm bending my knee. You don't have to bend the knee. Actually, it's much useful, more useful if you do it like this. But oh my God, the sound is horrible. So this. Then when I finished that, did my coughs first, feel them out to see how they're feeling today. Are they happy? Are they not? Are they stiff? And then upon doing so, I rolled them out as well by putting another, another, the second leg on the first leg. Yeah. And of course, if you need to massage the tibial part as well. So this is basically whole body rolling. Uh, there are two suggestions I would give. So either you will use it to trigger point your muscles in a way that you make a better connection between your brain and the muscles. So when you start the workout, the muscles will be communicating better with your brain. So that's trigger pointing, yeah? So that means you will probably roll maybe five minutes so just pass through a certain area and just go on the next. You don't have to stay and roll like this for a longer period of time. The second way you could use your roller would be on a like, for instance, recovery and rest day, because then I would do it for a longer time. I would probably roll for half an hour and I would really try to address all the areas that feel stiff or that feel like they need some help uh, for me to do for them. So my friend Fred here helps me a lot daily usually roll and trigger point my body before each workout, always. And on recovery days, I roll for half an hour, two hours, sometimes longer. I just, you know, watch a movie or do something and roll. It doesn't take, take a lot of time, it doesn't take a lot of space, but it will be of high benefit and it will be very thankful. So try to uh, use this if you have a roller. If not, buy one, not so expensive. And find a friend, like, find a friend like me, Fred, yeah name him and use him and be good to him because he's going to be good to you and enjoy rolling that's about it see you later on my youtube channel